So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio Reading and for my YouTube channel. And I'm super excited to be joined by a legend in the form, an icon even, in the form of Christopher Biggins. How are you, Christopher? Well, as icons go, very well. <laughs> and I mean, how have you been over this last couple of years? I mean, obviously it's been tough for a lot of people, but how have you coped with it all? How have you been affected? Well, the first lockdown I loved. Uh, my partner and I, Neil, we have a beautiful home and we were able to revisit it because we're always so busy going out. And so it was lovely to find uh, pictures, paintings, books, uh, how nice the home we had and to revisit it. So it was, it was fabulous. The second lockdown was very, very boring indeed and dull and dreary and I uh, didn't like it. Towards the end of the second um, lockdown, though, I, I, I sort of, I think, I think it was the second lockdown. I was lucky enough to go in and, and, and support the NHS in as much as they did two operations for me. The first one was a new valve in my heart, which uh, was fantastic. Um, I went to, which was the hospital I went to, Neil? Uh, Barts. I went to St Bart's Hospital, which was fantastic, and they were absolutely brilliant, and they did the most wonderful operation, and I'm, the, the, I've got a scar, which is brilliant, and, and I feel wonderful. I've got to go in for a procedure next week or the week after, which is just a tiny thing to tweak the, um, uh, the, the movement of the heart or something like that. Anyway, so I've got to do that, but that's great. And then uh, a few months later, I went in, uh, a heart flutter, you say. <laughs> a few weeks later, I went, months later, I went in and had a new knee put in. And that I went to, which hospital was that, Neil? Guys and St. Thomas. Oh, Guys, Guys, yes, right. Guys and St. Thomas, who were absolutely brilliant. And uh, it was great because the, the uh, heart operation was great, except that I, I suffered with the anaesthetic, which I think a lot of people do. But so for the knee, I asked if I could have an epidural, which I did have, and I gave birth to twins, uh, which was fantastic. <laughs> I mean, that, we, we must, of course, talk about the amazing NHS and what an amazing job they've done, you know, not just over the last two years, but, you know, forever. I mean, what, forever. Are, your thought, what are your thoughts and, and what would you say to the amazing NHS? Well, the NHS are just brilliant. I mean, there's nothing like it. I mean, the unfortunate thing is I, I used to have private insurance and I gave it up because it was too expensive. And also there was always a complication. No, no, you can't have that now. Blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. Whereas the only problem with the national health is that you've got to wait. You can't have it immediately or when you want it. So, but I mean, if you're going to have a heart attack, that you don't know when you're going to have a heart attack, so you, you literally rely on the national health. And they are, without doubt, we're so lucky in this country to have this national health service. It's just brilliant. The nurses are wonderful, the doctors are wonderful, everybody's wonderful. I mean, it is a joy. And I've been going up and having physiotherapy. I've been going to these Thomas's swimming pool to, with my knee. I mean, everything about it is great. I have nothing but admiration and joy and I will applaud you every single day of my life for the rest of my life. I mean obviously one of the hard things that happened during the lockdowns was of course the closure of a lot of the theatres and and people couldn't you know do their daily jobs. I mean for you how did you feel about you know everything that was going on with the theatres? Well it was terrible and I have some great friends uh, who own theatres and do most of the big productions, i.e. Cameron McIntosh. And, you know, things were really tough for him and still are. We haven't yet got completely back to how the West End was because I think people are still frightened, even though um, uh, our Prime Minister has told us to we can go out with masks and we can get, live a life, which is true. I mean, I did a pantomime this year in Dartford and I, I got the whole way through the pantomime. On the last day on the testing, I tested positive. So I got COVID and it was like having a cold. And uh, you know, normally one would work through that. And I think that's what you've got to do with COVID is you have to say to yourself, you know, it's, it's this, we've got to live with this forever. I mean, it's, it's like another version of flu or a bad cold. I and mean, we've just got to admit that and just take your injections and, and do 
whatever you feel right and, and good about. And uh, that's, that's, that, that's what it's all about. And I mean, of course, pantos are, are a big part of your life. For you, what is it you love about the, the you know, getting up on stage and, you know, playing the dame? What, what is it that, that for you that, that brings that to, you know, that makes it so fun? Well, it's the audience. I mean, you go out there and the audience is 100% behind you because they've come out to have a good evening uh, and they're so positive. It, it's absolutely wonderful. I mean, I, I love the audience. I love playing the audience. The only thing about COVID uh, is that, you, of course, you, I can't have children up on stage. I'm going to Darlington this year, which I, I started my dame career in the theatre there. Uh, they've asked me to go back and I'm really honoured. But I hope by the end of this year that I will be able to have children up because that's my favourite bit is having the kids up and talking to them. And uh, you know, also, hopefully we won't have to go out to an audience full of, of uh, people wearing masks because I think that's very prohibiting for a, an audience and especially for children. I mean, of course, for, for, for Pantos in particular, I think for a lot of youngsters, that is often their first introduction into theatre. I mean, do you remember the first time you went to a theatre? And, and do you remember kind of how you felt there? Oh, yes. I mean, it was magical. I, would, I Luckily, I was brought up in a, a market town called Salisbury in Wiltshire. And we had the most fantastic repertory company uh, called the Salisbury Rep. And it was absolutely wonderful. I mean, and when I left school at 16 and a half, I, I went to uh, Salisbury Rep and I, I asked for a job and he gave me a job for two weeks and I stayed for two years. Reggie Solberg, who was a brilliant uh, manager of theatres and a, a true theatrical genius in a way. His brother used to run Birmingham, the, Hippo, the, uh, not the, Hippodrome, the uh, Alexander Theatre in, in Birmingham. So they were a great family of theatre people and they were just wonderful. Um, so uh, I was very lucky to be able to go there and I spent two years there and whilst I was there there was a wonderful actress called Stephanie Cole and Stephanie Cole uh, insisted I go to drama school, her drama school, which was Bristol Old Vic Theatre School and so when I left at nearly 18 to go to drama school I was a, a fully fledged theatrical and it was just, I was very lucky indeed in that way. I mean, do you remember where you first became interested in, in theatre and performing? Do you remember kind of when, when the bug bit you? Yeah, I do, uh, because um, my family, as I said, lived in Salisbury, and they all talked with an accent. They all talked like that. Uh, you know, they were all from that West Country area, so we, we all talked like that. My great aunt Vai was a terrible snob, and she hated the way I spoke, so she insisted I have elocution lessons. And luckily, my elocution mistress, Mrs. Christian, saw something in me and encouraged me into the theatre, or rather into theatricals. And I, I'll never, ever forget her. And I'll, I'll never think anything bad of her because she was wonderful. And she encouraged me so much so that I've had this amazing career. When I look back on my biog, I can't believe I've done all the things I've done. And it's been so varied. So I've been very, very lucky indeed. I mean, for you, what would you say has been the highlight? Because, I mean, you, like you say, you have done so much. You've worked with so many amazing people. You've, you know, what for you is the highlight? Is there a highlight? There is a highlight. And it may surprise you when I tell you what it is. Because having, you know, played Shakespeare, played um, directed opera, um, appeared in uh, Claudius, appeared in Poldark, playing the sex craze vicar. They're all... And it just, the list goes on and on and on, all the things I've done. And the thing that I, I'm most proud of, and the thing that is most important to me, is winning I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Because, you know, that was voted in by the public. And so that was fantastic. And I still, to this day, can't believe, A, I did it, and believe, believe that I won it. And it was very special. My, my life changed uh, overnight. I think I was about 55 years old when that happened and it was it was it was marvelous so uh, i was very very lucky indeed i mean how did you find that experience because i imagine it was it must have been tough being you know obviously in australia in the heat i mean for you what what was the the, the best part of that experience and did you learn much about yourself while you were out there oh yes i certainly did i learned a lot and uh it was a fantastic experience and i loved every single moment of it I mean, you know, from the eating of a, a kangaroo's penis, as I said at the time, I've had worse things in my mouth, 
and uh, from being uh, put in an underground dungeon with uh, Anna Ryder Richardson and, and spending the night with 200 rats. I mean, everything about it was fantastic. I loved every minute of it. It was sensational. I have a feeling our lady wants to come in here, doesn't she, Neil? She does, actually. So, uh, everybody, my, I'm going to move now to the dining This is, we're in the kitchen at the moment. I'm going to move to the dining room to show what a luxurious life I lead in moving. So I'm just going to move gently, put me a second. Continue talking, get asked me the next question. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously talking about, you know, I'm a celebrity and, and getting to kind of find out more about yourself. I mean, when you do things like that, I mean, you're obviously, you're learning, you're finding out, you know, yourself as a person and, and your character. I mean, you, you obviously said that you did learn quite a lot. What was the one thing um, about yourself that you learned that maybe you didn't know about yourself beforehand? Well, I tell you what was, uh, the, the, the amazing thing is, and it's a piece of advice I give to everybody who goes into the jungle when they ring and say, look, what should I, what should I do? And th my piece of advice is quite simple. And that is to remain yourself, be yourself. If you start acting, uh, and three weeks is a long time to be there, it, you can't remember what you've done acting wise. And it's, it just is, it, 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 it it's terrible to start performing. You just have to take your personality in hand and say, this is what you're going to get. And I think that is the secret. And it's a, it's a, a wonderful secret, which only you could do. And it's, it's marvellous. And I mean, I imagine you must, when you're out there, you must have to do some things that are petrifying. Did you, I mean, were there anything that you were absolutely petrified about and that you obviously did and were glad you did? Uh, sort of any yes, I mean, came? I hate spiders and I had to go into a, a Perspex container with 200 spiders. And that was pretty grueling. I mean, everything was pretty grueling, but you know, it's amazing how, and the other thing you have to think to yourself is they're not going to murder me. You know, they don't want Christopher Biggins murdered or to, to die so they're not going to give you something along those lines uh even though sometimes you think well this is it i am going to die uh you know but i mean it's it, it is amazing and I, I was lucky enough I, just, I was lucky enough to um to move a chair out here uh not go in a helicopter and be dropped from a great height so that was good i don't think i would have liked that very much but i was because i i walked in and was confronted by the hideous Janice Dickinson, the American model. Uh, so uh, she was pretty vile, um, and I don't mind telling people that. So um, I was lucky, you know, everything I, I did, and I, I had lovely people with me. You know, they were marvellous contestants. Sorry, there I am now. I'm settled down now. Uh, marvellous contestants with me, and so I was very lucky. It was a great, great experience. I mean, obviously, having done that, is was there any is there anything else you know, sort of challenge wise, that you would love to do, um, that you maybe haven't had the chance to do yet? Any any sort of? No, I'm seventy three years old, and you know, I don't have any ambitions anymore. I mean, I I I just want to keep working, and as I say, you know, I signed to go to Darlington next this coming year for pantomime, which I'm thrilled about. So it's it's all good, all good news. And I mean, of course, you know, over the years, we must go back and talk about, you know, you've worked with some amazing people. I mean, the one that sticks in my mind is the fantastic Ronnie Barker. I mean, for you, who, who were the people that you looked up to when you were growing up and, and people that you've worked with that maybe just exceeded your expectations? Well, I mean, uh, I've been lucky enough to meet so many, so many wonderful people. I mean, it's, it's been fantastic. Um, and I, I, I relish every moment of it. They're, they're, everybody has been marvellous. Um, Ronnie Barker was fantastic, as was Richard Beckinsale. It was terrible when he died. Um, I've loved working with so many people. Uh, and my list of people I, I don't want to work with ever again is very small. I think it's probably only Janice Dickinson because she was such a cow. Um, so it's, it, you know, that's, that is all really. I mean, I, I've worked with, in a small way, the, my very dear friend, Joan Collins who is extraordinary and I've, uh, we've just celebrated her 20th wedding anniversary with a huge party at Claridge's. And she is amazing and through her, I've met some wonderful people. Uh, staying with her in America, I was invited to a, a George Burns, the very famous American comedian, 97th birthday party, which was very exciting. And he was on my table, as was my hostess, uh, Barbara 
uh, Gary, uh, Barbara, Gary, Barbara. Oh, it'll come to me in a minute. Uh, but thank you, Neil's coming back. My 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 carer out there, Barbara <laughs> Davis. Barbara Davis. And uh, but on our table next to me was Shakira Kane, who was a friend, and then next to her was Frank Sinatra. And I thought, my God, Frank Sinatra. And I had a long conversation with him. And I thought, if my mother could see me now, she'd die. I mean, it would be wonderful. Uh, no, no, it wouldn't be wonderful. She died, but I mean, it was it was a wonderful experience for me to meet such a huge star and to talk to him. I told him that about eight years before I met him, I played Nathan Detroit in Guys and Dolls. And he said, you know, Christopher, so did I. And I thought, this is it, I can die now and go to heaven. And I mean, who, are the, who were the people that when you were kind of getting into the industry, who were the people that you looked up to and the people that, that you kind of aspired to maybe have, you know, a bit of their career? Well, I think that uh, when I was uh, very young, I'd left drama school and I was uh, in theatre and I, I, I joined the RSC company at the Aldwych. And I was working uh, with Donald Sindon and Judy Dench, and who were two great, great performers, absolutely wonderful people, who I absolutely adored and, and I learned so much from. I mean, you know, just watching them from the wings was extraordinary. Um, and uh, there have been people all my life, I suppose, you know, who I recognize as being really great. And I've been lucky and fortunate enough to work with those people. I mean, they've, they've been wonderful. I mean, I, I did a pant I've done pantomime seasons with Irene Handel, who was fantastic with um, Dora Bryan. Um, and, you know, people who I, I, I used to look up to and think, you know, these are really stars. These are really wonderful people. And it was fantastic. I was very, very, I've been very, very lucky in my career, I have to say. I mean, if you hadn't gone into the acting world or, you know, kind of gone into the entertainment world, I mean, what would you have done? I mean, is there anything else, any other interests that you have or, or was it always going to be acting? Well, I suppose it always was going to be acting, but I would have liked to have, uh, I've been collecting art uh, for 50 years and I love art and I, I, I could easily see myself as an art dealer. I mean, I, I, the only thing is I'd never sell anything. I'd, I'd keep everything. And so that would be impractical, but I do love art. I also love traveling. So I could have been, uh, uh, I could be a travel agent, I suppose. I mean, I really enjoy that. I love eating. So I could have been a restaurant. I wanted at one particular point to open a club. And I went and had a drinks and talked to uh, Paul Raymond, the, the marvelous club and, and uh, entrepreneur in London. And he had many clubs and, uh, we nearly did something together and it was, it was, that was exciting. But you know, at the end of the day, my career has been marvellous and I've loved it and I've really enjoyed it. Now, I just want to say it's been a pleasure talking to you, but before we go, is there any messages you would like to give to anyone who's currently stuck in hospital at the moment and not having the best of times? Uh, anything you'd like to say to them at all? Yeah, if you're stuck in hospital and not having the best of times, um, don't blame the nurses don't blame the doctors. Don't blame anybody but yourself. You've got to really use this opportunity. There's lots of things you can do. You can read. Uh, if, you, if you like reading, you can watch television. You can communicate with, your, uh, with people who are in your ward. Uh, you know, everybody is so interesting. And it's, it's, it's wonderful to chat and talk to people about and, and talk about what their illness is and talk about your illness and enjoy it and have a laugh. Whatever you, I mean, no things may be depressing. You may be very, very ill, but please, please have a laugh. Laughter is the tonic we all need and we all love. Now, I just want to say, Christopher, thank you so much for giving up your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, of course, keep safe and you're welcome back anytime. Uh, Matthew, thank you very much indeed. It's been really joyous. I've loved it. <laughs>